Hey everybody, this is Hercules Pedix, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Pedix Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today, we're going to have a very special episode. Uh, we call it Academy Roundup. And basically, I realized I've kind of forgotten uh, to include certain things in certain videos. And I figured, oh, I'll just kind of catch up and uh, show off a few things. And then I realized I've got a bunch of weird ephemera that uh, doesn't merit a whole video. So I decided to throw throw them all into this video. So there's just gonna be some weird odds and ends in here, some uh, kooky stuff. Um, but also, um, I'm gonna have stuff that I forgot to put in Sleeves to Astonish, a CD book I forgot to put in, uh, more Sophie Franz. Uh, I did that whole video of all of her little fanzines and I forgot right on the shelf, I had this beautiful um, art book she put out and I space that. And also I have a new kicked out of the Academy. Um, so, uh, and then on top of that, I got all this other crazy shit I wanna show off. So if, I bet you're wondering what you're looking at right now. Yes, this is a Lorenzo Matoti Pog. Um, it's, uh, I guess it was made for a special appearance by Lorenzo Matoti. And uh, it just baffles me that there's a Lorenzo Matoti Pog out there. On the back it says, meet Lorenzo Matoti at the booth. That's Fumetti. So I don't know if this was some Italian comic convention or it says, bring your cappy. So I don't know what that means either. <laughs> it's very strange. Next I wanna show off, this is a very crazy rarity. So I had a coworker it, it, at this cafe where I worked in uh, the 90s. And she was from Belgium, I believe, somewhere in Europe. And she knew I liked comics. So she gave me this phone card with art by Juice Swartha on it. I don't know if this has ever been reprinted anywhere. I hope you can see it okay. It's, it's kind of dingy. I have a knick-knack bric-a-brac shelf right over my oven. So unfortunately, a lot of the things have gotten kind of greasy over the years. Um, I should find a new spot for it. But uh, really nice juice, juice toward the art. And on the back, it's got uh, this pretty cool design. I like this a lot. Let me uh, center that for you. And we get a little drawing here. And whatever this is, this cool design, it's pretty neat. So that's another weird little thing I have, Curio. And then I wanted to show off this little thing, which isn't like a real thing. But this is a shout out to my brother. Let me um pull back a little. Oh, I don't know why I just did that. That's weird. So me and my brother, when we were little, we were so into this. We'd cut out panels from comics and then we would put like stuff under it. So it would have depth. So the image would leap out at you. This is a little, uh, needs to be glued down a little better. But this is from a Marvel Spotlight issue featuring Captain Marvel, drawn by Pat Mo Broderick. So uh, I don't know if you can see how there's some like, we'd build up the backing so it would like come out at you. <laughs> it's very dingy over the years. This too has been over the oven and uh, it's seen better days. But I just wanted to show that. I don't know why. I'm just, uh, thought it'd be interesting. Okay, next. We have, uh, let me uh, zoom in here, or zoom out, I should say. Wait, let me see. Yeah, this should be enough. Okay, so this is a, a box for a toy that Jim Woodring made. Actually, a series of toys, all six figures. He could collect them all. Crazy newts and uh, just beautiful Jim Woodring creatures here, characters. It's great stuff. Time Capsule, Art Capsule Toy Project, Jim Woodring Crazy Newts. And uh, so that's the box, definitely worth saving. And it comes with this little booklet. The 70s were made sweet and crunchy. Oh, let me pull it back a little, sorry. kind of hard to do in reverse 
Okay, the 70s were made sweet and crunchy by the constant keening of insects and the mellow men who kept them blissful. Smooth faces prevailed, and when the monsters came, their faces were smooth too. The damage had to be done, in fun. A sweet froth made even the harshest punks delicious, and everyone's blood was tasty. <laughs> what the fuck? So this is from um, 2001. The copyright date says there. And uh, I don't know if any of these have been uh, uh, reprinted. So this is from one of the toys I got. On the back, we can uh, see the the various toys assembled. It has Japanese lettering, so I guess this is a Japanese toy. Um, they probably um, were in those uh, machines that sell the little toys. And uh, here is... One of them, man, Jim Wonder is a fucking genius. That's <laughs> so great. What a fucking weird design. And then, I like this guy. He's doing a, kind of doing a headstand. <laughs> oh man, I should get uh, the other four of these crazy newts. So there's that. Okay, since we're on the subject of gym watering, this was uh, something I neglected to put in the Sleeves to Astonish episode about CDs. This was actually the whole reason I thought about doing it, and then I forgot to take it off the shelf. This is Trosper. This is um, a book that uh, Fanagraphics put out. Jim Woodring uh, does all the art, and it's quite beautiful art. And there's a CD by Bill Frizzell kind of avant-garde musician and this is just beautiful woodring art and uh, it's kind of a storybook not really comics but let's uh nice end papers <laughs> this trosper's so cute so this little character just just in bliss playing with this ball He's got some kind of guard. Maybe Trosper is like a prince because it does look like he lives in a castle. And then all of a sudden from this doorway, look at this amazingly creepy creature. And he attacks the guard. God, the colors on this, so fucking beautiful. see if uh, I can open this up okay. Hold on a second, I gotta adjust the light. And Trosper's just watching, crying. Just going, stop it. Let me slide it a little. And now uh, Trosper runs away crying. And then this little portal appears before him. And another monster comes out from this portal. So he turns tail and runs the other way. Man, only Jim Woodring could come up with these designs. It's just so amazing. He's so unique. Look at this beautiful, amazing colors here. It almost looks like photorealistic. So Trasper's running away. Is that another crazy monster? Oh God, every page of this is so good. You guys gotta find this. If it's still in print. Such beautiful art. Oh man, those colors. And another crazy monster. And then Trosper's kind of tuckered out. He's just still crying. And then he sees the ball. 
and he's just happy as a clam again. Just totally forgot about all those monsters trying to kill him. Not too bright, this Trosper. Then again, I think he's a little toddler, basically. Got these nice end, peep end peepers. Here's the CD. There's no art on it, so I'm not going to take it out. And uh, the back cover. I love how it has the spine, just like the old golden books. You know, the little tape that uh, wraps around to hold the book together. So that was supposed to be in Sleeves to Astonish, and I spaced it. Okay, next we're going to look at Face Tasm. Let me uh, embiggen this a little. And uh, this is a, a team up between Charles Burns and Gary Panter. And it was published by that uh, small publisher, Gates of Heck. They did a lot of fun, uh, kind of uh, independent comic stuff. Very limited edition type stuff. Really nice. And the deal with this book, you probably seen books like this when you were a little kid. It's, let me center it, kind of center it. And obviously Charles Burns drew that one. Gary Panner. Uh, I think it is. I could be wrong. Am I doing these all right? No, I think I, uh, yeah, there we go. I'll show you each one and then I'll start flipping around. And show, that's the real fun of the book. Oh, so I guess front and back's the same character. I guess as I flip through, you're getting different faces too, huh? This is so cool. I love this. I guess um, these 24 pages, basically, you can make 7,000 variations. <laughs> I love how they really line up. It's a, uh, it must have taken a lot of uh, thought to make this, you know, a lot of logistics. Man, these drawings are great. If I, I, if it could be a false memory, but I think like a major publisher, because you know S Spiegelman has got those that arrangement with like the big publishers. I think they might have put this out as a gift book. You know, they figured it'd be something you could sell at Hot Topic or something. You know, for hipsters with a little money. Like this one. I like that combo. Looks like he's wearing a weird little mask. God, these are so cool. I haven't looked at this in so long. Sorry, I like that one too. <laughs> That's definitely Gary Panner. I think I went too far. <laughs> Look at this doofus here. Okay, uh oh, hold on, this one's sticking. Okay. Maybe I should have given this one a whole episode. I could have just done every 7,000, all 7,000 variations of it. <laughs> this is so fun. I'm sorry. I should have played with this every year. I, I've totally forgotten about it. It was just sitting on my shelf. <laughs> Let me uh, do something real quick. I get a little stuck. Make sure it's aligned again. Okay. 
little cute, weird teddy bear dude. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna keep doing that, I guess. I'm afraid I'm gonna rip these. again. I wish Charles Birds and Gary Painter would collaborate more. Such different art styles, but uh, they really go together. It's almost like they got a similar sensibility, even though they draw very differently from each other. Looks like a Dick Tracy villain. A, a, a more mundane one. Okay, sorry, this is getting tricky here. This is your photo here. I guess you could, uh, that would have been actually cool if they uh, made three little slits and you could put your photo on it or, or draw your own thing to add to the creation. And uh, there's the back cover. Really nice little book, hardcover, very slick. I bought this when it came out, so yeah, what was it? Let me uh, double check here. I guess this came out in 1998. Okay, this uh, isn't something I missed. Uh, I love this little book. So, uh, actually, I'm going to have to bump out a little. Zoom out a little. Hold on a sec. Hope that works. So, this is so cute. So, Art Spiegelman did a children's book. It's called Open Me, I'm a Dog. <laughs> it even comes with its own leash. And I guess take it for a walk. <laughs> it's so cute. I love the way he draws this dog too. So this came out in 1997. He dedicates it to his kids. So this was published by like a, an imprint of HarperCollins. So it was, uh, you know, in all of the bookstores. So this cute little puppy's like, who's that? You think I smell of paper and ink? You think I look like a book? I was sure you of all people could see past the wizard's curse. Actually, yeah, you could put your kids up to the screen now when it's their bedtime. Show, show them this and I'll... Look, I can wag my tail. <laughs> How many books have tails that wag? I guess I can't read all of it or I might get a ticket down for copyright stuff. So apparently this dog meets all these magical creatures who put curses on him. They all smell funny. First he meets a witch who smells like oatmeal. She gets pissed at him for breaking her favorite broom. He was teething on it, kind of bit it. So she turned him into a German shepherd, but not that kind of German shepherd. She actually turns him into a little shepherd boy who lives in Germany. He meets a magic maiden. She smelled like fish. 
and I guess uh, they kind of had a little romance going and when she asked him for a kiss one night <laughs> he just sticks his tongue out and licks her face like a dog <laughs> and then she gets really ticked off and she turns him into a bullfrog <laughs> that cracks me up that angry magic maiden and then he, so he becomes a giant bullfrog so she gives him to her uh, her uncle Morris as a gift he, he's an evil, evil wizard he smelled like cheese and old socks he tried to hide from him but it's hard for a giant fry, frog to hide in a place like this and look at this it's got a little flap where And so this wizard turns him into this book. He says, I love sitting in your lap and I want you to pet me. And so they put this uh, fuzzy, this is like that, uh, what is it, felt? It is now, but, uh, oh man, this book is darling. It's basically saying, you can hide me in your backpack. I can uh, keep you safe while you sleep, beware of book. He's like, I'm a dog, I'm a dog, I'm a dog. Oh, that is so cute. I love it. There's the back cover. It's the, the back of this. Who knows, maybe this is a dog. I don't know. <laughs> Some evil wizard could have turned him. So, uh... Uh, about a month ago, we had an episode where I focused on a bunch of small press publications by Sophie Franz, uh, the great local Portland cartoonist. And I totally f missed this thing. It was on the shelf. And uh, this is like the best thing uh, I've, I have by her. This is beautiful. It's basically just an art book. It looks like she took a lot of stuff from her sketchbooks. It's called The Orange Thief. Look at that great cover. want to break the spine here got to be careful so this came out in 2017 and there's just so much beautiful art in here look at this so many different styles too like a lot of pages in here i'm like that doesn't even look like the same artist this is, looks like a sketchbook page it has a little note she says this is from the cover of a, a Matoti book. She was kind of trying to duplicate it. Not from a pog, though. Really great stuff. Oh, God, look at that. 70s porn star in space. Every page in this is a treasure, I think. This is just beautiful stuff. I usually don't go to like art galleries, but I would love to see her stuff, like giant paintings by her. I would totally go to an art show. But of course, I, um, I don't go out much, so I don't even know what's going on. But maybe I should look that up. Another great page, look at that. A lot of these looks like she just chopped up sketchbook pages, but she does it really great. They're so It's almost like a collage feel, and it looks really good. The way she um, organizes them on the page. It's not just like some haphazard thing. It's a great design. I like these medieval people kissing. It's probably, it looks like it's taken from an old painting, and they're thinking, She's thinking, oh, God, is it almost over? Please just let it be over. And he's thinking, I wonder if she's into it. Seems like she's not into it. <laughs> I think we've all been there before. Great Kermit the Frog. Oh, 
man, I love this shit. Look how good that looks. Cousins in a bathtub. Oh man, I'm gonna try to open this without cracking the spine too much. Double page spread. Actually, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure actually. It looks like it could be though. I'll try to uh, show you both sides. I like these mock covers for some weird old comic that never existed. <clears throat> I wish they did. Oh, this one's great. Oh, shit. That's so groovy. It's so cool. Uh, how did she do it? She's got such an amazing visual imagination. She's like one of those people where, you know, like R. Crumb has those complete sketchbooks. I bet hers are amazing. I hope she uh, gets to trade her sketchbooks in for a house one day in France. She deserves it, I think. The, the crazy colors, really good though. And then her black and white stuff is just fucking great too. She's so good with color though, I think I prefer color stuff. This is amazing. She wanted to draw this manga cover. She just liked the design. He has a preliminary for a comic strip. Really good stuff. <laughs> I don't know who the hell this is. Scary mutant. I love how he's in black and white and then it's so lush, the painting. Almost like he's from another dimension, it looks like, or something. He doesn't belong in that world. This one's a little more abstract, kind of weird. Very nice though. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> Fucking little uh, Manchi Chi girl. Or boy, I can't tell. Oh, look at the drawing ability there. That face is so good. I don't know if that's a self portrait or not. She usually draws herself differently in her, her autobiography comic, so. So if you want to see more of her, uh, I, it was like a month ago I posted the video of uh, Sophie Frown stuff. Nice little comic strip here. Kind of looks like early Chris Ware almost. It could, it could be. He, the style is not really the same, but just the nice, you know, logo and the design. Like it's some old timey comic. Oh man, look at this. Great stuff. And the way she colors that, it's almost like three dimensional. Like you're looking at a photo of a toy frog. That's a great face. Looks like he'd be that guy, Marty, the Spaniard, if he drew better. I love this one, too. So I guess I should have done some research, guys, because I if she has any copies of this, I'm sure she has a website, Sophie Franz, P-H-I-E, Sophie. 
and uh, frowns just like it sounds. And maybe she's still selling these. It was $18. I bought it at Floating World Comics here in Portland. Like these character designs here. I would like to read comics about those three little weird kids. So many different styles. This looks like some crazy like refugee from Yellow Submarine, the movie. Weird little late 60s Peter Max creation or something. This almost looks like she's playing around with uh, trying to ink like Charles Burns. This uh, Brajir or whatever you call it, girdle. Nice Archie. Oh man, look at that. It is just like my eyeballs are drooling like looking, looking at this shit. I think that could be Klaus Nomi. If not, it's still great. It's just a great drawing. <laughs> Klaus Nomi with a huge ass. Stretch pants. God, this looks like a fun comic. If, if this was a comic cover, I'd buy that. Sight unseen. Love that logo too. This looks like another comic I'd buy sight and seen. Tragic ghost comics. All these ghosts are crying. Making this girl cry. And this looks totally different. The way he draws that, she draws that woman. Invasion. I want this comic to exist so bad. Tracksuit Trevo. <laughs> Some hero in the old west that looks like who wears a tracksuit. It looks like it hang out with Doofus and Henry Hotchkiss. Oh, look at this. I love the combination of the color and the black and white. <laughs> I also love, there's a a strip club here named after a Leonard Cohen song. I would love if, if a strip club had the name So Long Marianne, I would just have to go and buy and support them. <laughs> and like as if this wasn't great enough, just in the background here, just a beautifully quickly inked tree line. Just amazing. She's so good. Hey. And then she has this uh, kind of nature, naturalist uh, art for a beluga sturgeon. Maybe she was doing a story on beluga sturgeons or is just fascinated by them. God, the names of the parts of uh, the sturgeon. I don't know if she made them up, but they just sound so funny. The scoots, the denticles, the anal fin, the spirit eye. That sounds uh, intriguing. Once again, totally different style than anything we've seen in the book. I don't know what, <laughs> this doesn't even remind me of anything. It's so bizarre. <laughs> I don't know why this guy makes me laugh. It's kind of cute. And a beautiful back cover. I don't know why I'm too lazy to take this sticker off. Part of me wants to keep it on so I'll know, I'll remember where I bought it. When I'm an old man, 
well, older than I am now. So there you have it, guys. Orange Thief by Sophie Franz. Hopefully, you can buy a copy. I want you to buy a copy. And, uh... Oh, yeah. This is crazy. You guys, are, I don't know if you're old enough to remember this, but in the mid-90s, you know, grunge culture was very bankable. And... Altoids in every tin of Altoids, there was one of these little things, and they commissioned Charles Burns. Okay, I should zoom in for this, and I'll just uh track it along. Let me get this centered a little. So, Charles Burns was commissioned to draw this little strip. I think this strip ha did appear in magazines as an ad, but I find this so curious. This little accordion style comic, it's very silly. This guy approaches these two ladies at the bar and he's doing that uh, 90s uh, speech like, Hello, ladies, wazizo it is. This club is the shiznit, yizo. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta follow along. Fo sheezy sizzle frizzle my rizzle drizzle. <laughs> I can't believe this was a thing. Back off skis, the women say. What a dork. I don't understand. Dude, you gotta be careful with this thing, his buddy tells him. Altoid strips. That's what this was. It was for when Altoid, Altoid strips came out. I think they're affecting your speech. That's the punchline. <laughs> so I have to keep this forever. <laughs> I do love Charles Burns, so... But I kind of wish this was in a, I don't know. I'd like to have a page of the ad to, with the actual comic in order. And then what was next here? Okay, guys, I hate to do this, be, be negative, but we had a kicked out of the Academy episode about, uh, I don't know, two months ago or so, maybe f three months ago. And I just recently read this. And this bothered me so much, I'm kicking it out. And this is weird for me, because I, Underground Comics, I kind of have a lower threshold. I just love Underground Comics because they're so, like, of their time. I kind of want to own every Underground Comic, even if they're crappy. Most of them are pretty good, though. But this one was so annoying that I just, I want to get rid of it. I don't want to see it anymore. The, the, the annoying thing is the cartooning is so nice. And so this is called Smile. It's by Jim Mitchell, published by Kitchen Sink. Jim Mitchell is in many of uh, Kitchen Sink's uh, anthologies all throughout the late 60s, early 70s. But I suspect this guy like worked for Hallmark or something. He had a really like commercial style. And uh, look at this little, this could totally be like a, a greetings card. So this is like either cutesy humor or this like really like hippie humor that almost seems like it was written by a 50 year old guy trying to be hip you know to the scene like that mod exploitation shit but he was a young guy but his humor is so hackney sometimes it just reads like ah oh, dude you're not a real hippie you're just kind of making fun of him from outside so that's his first story is pretty much like that but look at this great cartooning so good because it's kind of good. Like, he could totally have a Sunday comic strip, this guy. I wouldn't be surprised, you know? It would probably look a better... It would look better than a lot of the guys who draw on the Sunday page. They had jokes about uh, radical women's libbers. About dogs who look like their owners. Course they make fun of like rock festivals. Then again, maybe if I can't find anyone to buy this, maybe it'll stay in the academy. I don't know. Maybe I'll change my mind, but for now I'm kicking it out. I'm putting it in my first sale pile. So at the next Frankenstein comic swap that we have in Portland every three months. If I can get a few bucks for this, it's out of here. 
Here's the rock festival, making fun of how much mud there is. This guy's so unfunny. He, he angers me. It doesn't make me laugh, it makes me angry. <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. Very facile artist. He's really good at what he does. Well, not the writing. But this is like. Great cartooning. Uh, this might have been the thing that made me want to kick it out of the academy. Wouldn't it be nice if everyone were children again? Uh, that art is gross to me. Even though it's well drawn, but it's so... Uh, and it shows this world where, like, there wouldn't be any cars polluting the air because no one would be old enough to drive. All this cutesy, woodsy shit, like... Something like a grandma would tape up on our refrigerator door right next to Family Circus. This one almost is okay. Even though it's very dated, it's a Spiro T. Agnew's the star. This guy's like Ziggy. But he's really cute. I mean, how amazed this guy didn't make a million dollars off this character, especially in the early 70s. This guy should have been on beach towels and shit. But I got to point out something here, guys. This is so weird. If you remember, if you've watched a lot of the videos, we did a video about Googie Welmer, um, number one. And I was lamenting the fact that there was never a number two. It was just too weird. And look at this. In the ad for upcoming Kitchen Sink Comics, there's the cover art for Googie Walmart 2. They were planning on publishing it. But I guess in between this ad and the sales figures coming back from number one, uh, this never came out. But it sounds like maybe the art exists somewhere. If that Wendell a Allen Pugh guy is still alive. Oh, God. This represents why I hate this comic. Light up and live. Look how well drawn that hand is, though. That's what irks me about this. He's such a good artist, and he could be using his talents for good instead of evil. But he's not. Okay, guys, I've never done this before. But I want to I wanna do a small ad, an advertisement, for a comic that me and my friend Chris Cajero Silo created in the 90s. It was a comic strip in the Arizona Daily Wildcat College newspaper. We collected them into three little fanzines back then with colored covers. And during uh, the lockdown, Chris uh, decided to collect them all and add some odds and ends and stuff, some other collaborations we had done over the years. Because uh, me and Silo, we, uh, we met uh, in the 80s. And... Chris was already putting out fanzines. I was just starting to put out comics and fanzines. And uh, we became friends. And then a few years later, we got this gig drawing this comic for the Wildcat. Just wanted to show it off. If you're interested, in the comment section, there's a link if you want to buy this. It's 12 bucks, but it's chock full of stuff. Chris did a new cover for this edition. Got some end papers here. Title page. Chris made me a hand letter, the introduction. That fucking took forever. And here we go. This is like the meat of the comic. All these strips we did. Everyone was pretty, almost everyone was pretty much a new idea. Zany, stupid gags, kind of illustrated poems, just all kinds of crazy shit. But, you know, yeah, I wrote them all and. <laughs> It was kind of just like, it was hard coming up with an idea every week, but Chris draws them all so good. It was such a luxury. So one of the coolest things in my life, getting to write these scripts and then waiting for Chris to see how I draw them. Kind of the, the visions in my head. And it was always 15 times better than I could even imagine. Tribute to uh, B. Coban here. Parodies of old DC Comics. There's all kinds of shit.
Morticia Lust, a Pantoom poem put to comics form, in comics form, urban legends they're telling in Mexico. I guess I'll go through this fast, guys. Our tribute to Jack Kirby here. Just want to read this to you. Actually, I shouldn't. That's, that's like really full of myself. Sorry. I'm already wasting your time. But I just want uh, to show you how good the art is by Chris. This is beautiful stuff. All different styles. Doing zany cartooning. Old-timey cartooning. Gag cartooning. Doing this like kind of, I don't know, dense kind of serious art. Okay, I'll just get through this. And after the strips, there's a lot of extras. The covers from the original fanzines. And these are some collaborations me and uh, Chris did uh, back in the 80s and 90s for our various fanzines. Sometimes we were just tripping on acid and we would just do jam drawings and then they'd come out pretty good, like this one. So I made it the cover of one of my fanzines. Wrap around cover. We did that a lot back then. Just take a bunch of acid and just uh, Chris would break out his rapidograph pens and we'd just sit in his apartment and draw on crazy shit. But yeah, my stories are pretty goofy, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> buy it for the art. This is amazing stuff from Chris. This actually two-pager appeared in uh, The Stranger, the Seattle paper. Probably the most exposure we ever got. T-shirt design we did. We sold these T-shirts. This was in the San Diego Comic-Con book for, I don't know, 1997, I believe. The roughs I sent to Chris. I would like kind of Harvey Kurtzman it. Kind of rough everything out. But way shittier, obviously. And then we reunited a few years ago for a local paper. First time we worked together in like, I don't know, 30 years. That was fun. Even articles about uh, from the time. And then I had to, I made footnotes for every strip. Handwritten. So just for that fact alone, you should buy this book that I put all this work into it. <laughs> that was so annoying, having a hand write again. Okay, guys, you can order this in the comment section. There's a, a link to it. Um, it's a published on demand type book. And I sh wanted to show off one other thing. I don't know what the hell this is all these years. I don't know, I can't remember where I bought it. Let me see if I, make sure I got everything, this in the whole picture. No, I gotta expand it a little. Give me a sec, guys. I gotta get out of my chair for a sec. Okay, a little bit more. That should be good. That's for the most part. Hopefully, you can see it all. Okay, it looks like CBO. <laughs> I, I think it was published in France. Well, I'm pretty pretty sure it is. And uh, let me see. Is this a wraparound cover? This is just this beautifully produced little kind of uh, fanzine. So beautiful, slick, cardstock, slick, uh, silkscreen cover. It says Rico here. If anybody knows what this is, uh, send me a comment. I would really appreciate it. I've had this for, I think, 25 years. I got it at a Comic-Con or something. Beautiful uh, printing. So I guess this is who's in it. I don't recognize any of these names. Yeah, it's a, a, a French address. So I can't tell you anything about these artists because I don't know. But almost all of it's really great stuff. Look at that. I hope you could see this, like the, the black here, the way it's printed, it's like shining. Like extra shiny, it gives it, especially when you kind of like tilt it around, it gives it this really neat effect. I don't know how they published that or like, I've never seen that before. I think it probably is very expensive. That's why. 
Is that called matte black? I don't know. Crazy drawn. Little center spread. I'm kind of glad I held on to this all these years. I've always thought about selling it, but I'm just like, that's ah, so cool. It's just some kind of crazy, almost like graffiti art. I love this cartoonist, whoever they are. God, those colors are so great. And just the, the cartooniness. Yeah, all these pages are thick. This has got that cool printing again, like this green. The highlights here are all shiny. A lot of these, I don't even know what I'm looking at. So I guess uh, here's information, but uh, I don't know French. I guess uh, there's that translator now on the phone, on the smartphone. I could check it out. Because I should have done that before this video, huh? <laughs> I don't like to do too much research. These things already take me long enough to make as it is. Oh, look at that. That's great. So there you have it, the unknown comic. Um, just because I'm too stupid to learn French or translate it. But um, hope you liked uh, today's episode, guys. Probably won't be doing this that often. But I just, it was kind of nagging me that I forgot to put the CD in and that I forgot that Sof Sophie Franz book. And I had a new kicked out of the academy and I just figured, ah, why not do a bunch of weird shit? So uh, yeah, maybe I will do it more often, actually. I do have a lot of weird comic related shit that's not necessarily a comic. And, um, so that might be fun, but I had a lot of fun doing this episode. I was just looking at my shelves, finding all these things I forgot about, like that juice swart, the phone card. I was like, yeah, I got to show that off to the, the viewers of the Academy. And, uh, cause, um, I don't know how many of those exist. Well, probably a lot, but I bet a lot of them were just thrown out, you know, when they were uh, expired. Okay. I'll stop gabbing. And thanks, guys, if you watched this video all the way through. Um, I hope you got to see all the crazy little treasures I showed off. And I hope to see you next time here at the Hercules Pedics Academy of Comic Book Studies.